Yes, more questions. I can answer questions. I can't just talk about shit. I wasn't really understand, and the, under the impression that this was going to be kind of a structured interview, so I wouldn't end up looking like an asshole, which is what is happening, you know? I, all day I was thinking, God, this is going to be great. I'm going to say some funny stuff, maybe say something poignant. I'm coming off looking like a fucking total idiot. It's all right, man. I can, you know, we can fix it. Let's keep it going. All right. felt deep inside that there was something more basic I needed to get at. Some kind of primal, kind of, it's like a tumor growing in the stomach and it was like, it's getting bigger and I needed to, you know, I can reach in and pull it out. And uh, I think that tumor was rock. And um, I'm now at ease with my uh, rock tumor and it's become a part of me, it's in my bones. And that we will walk together towards the, uh, you know, graveyard of destiny. Me and Bill were in a band called the Meat Helmets for a couple of years. Um, some of the stuff we did was kind of similar to the cockouts, kind of garagey rock. It was a little more experimental. Um, emphasis on mental. And we, um, that band disbanded as bands tend to do. And uh, we, you know, we were pretty depressed. We wanted to play some rock together, but we didn't, we couldn't find any other people who were ready. Um, <clears throat> then one day we were kind of walking through a field of wildflowers, and Colin was out there with an easel, painting a beautiful, just beautiful, touching kind of still life of these flowers. I mean, I'd never seen, never seen life breathed into a, a painting in such a delicate, sensitive way. Um, and uh, we walked up to him and said, hey, you know, you're not fooling us with this. You're not fooling us with this fucking, you know, sensitive guy bullshit. We know you're just doing it for the ladies. And he was like, yeah, you're right, I am. It's not working too good. And I said, hey, you know, one sure way to get chicks is to fucking get on that stage and rock. And he's like, I play bass. And I was like, uh-huh, yeah, right. We got to practice. Scorcher. Up and down, it was amazing. I'd never seen it. Just as he breathed a new life into that painting, he made the bass strings come alive. And uh, so we decided that, um, you know, we all have our own reasons for being in the band. Colin, of course, for the ladies. Bill, just because he likes to hit things. He's a very angry, disturbed man. Um, I'm kind of a person, I'm kind of a, a poet, you know. And Poets are kind of faggy in general, but if you're a rock poet, it's something else. So I want to get my message across, or whatever. Um, and we just figured, hey, let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens, you know? Can't hurt. First practice, it was kind of like, eh. It's kind of like with the drugs. You try them once, you're like, I don't really like it. You try it again, it's a little better. The third time, bam, you're an addict. We had one practice that was, I was like, eh, there was some potential. You know, maybe we need to get a fourth member or whatever. Second practice, I was like, okay, just shaking up a little bit. The egg is boiling. It's almost, it's soft boiled right now. Next practice, fucking whole basket full of hard boiled eggs. Um, it was amazing. <laughs> um, it was just, we knew. It clicked. Um, when I was uh, 14, I saw a Muppets drum set at Toys R Us. I really thought it was cool. My dad bought it for me. And I only played it for about uh, a week. 
and uh, I didn't like it anymore. So I stopped playing it. Then I started playing it again two weeks later, and then I thought it was really cool again. I played it for about six weeks, and then I thought it was uncool. So I, I gave it up for about four years, and then I started playing again. At that time, I got a real drum set. I mean, I played bass first, and then I played bass for like 10 years before I ever picked up a guitar. But then, that was a long time ago, and I've played guitar for about 10 years, too, since then. And I love them both, but I just don't... I've always played bass in bands because there's always guitar players, and there's always seems to be a shortage of bass players, you know. And so I was always just stepped up to bat when I was needed to play bass, but which is kind of why I probably have this desire to like play guitar. While well, we're going to start, Cockhouse is going to start having some two guitar songs. And cool. Bass. Cool. So and Johnny's, he thinks he's a bad bass player, but he's not. out with their cock out. You know, that's that's something I've heard about them. You know. Looking forward to seeing it tonight. Tell us about the cock outs. Tell us about your latest rock experience. I've never heard the cock outs. I've never seen the cock outs. Don't come up here. It's bad. Very bad. Hey, um, we're the cock outs. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Sometimes you play a show and, uh, you know, people are into it. If it's a place that has a bar, sometimes they're at the back, you know, they paid money to get in. They paid five or six dollars to get in. Then they're paying five or six dollars a drink, staying at the back. There's maybe three or four people who understand. Three or four, you know, people who get it, standing in front of the stage. Everyone else is in the back and you're like, hey, you know, if they want to pay money, you know, we've already made our money. They're in. We don't care. But I feel it's my duty to uh, kind of, you know, make them realize what stupid idiots, what kind of asshole morons they are, um, when they could have just gone to a regular bar, you know, and they would have been able to talk and pick up chicks or dudes or whatever it is they like to do without having to pay cover and yell over some group playing. And um, at first, when I first had this revelation a few years ago, and uh, I stopped being nice to the audience, stopped molly coddling them, if you will, um, I realized that that never works. You know, they say you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. Well, you catch more flies with a fucking hand grenade than with a feather, all right? So I decided that I'm gonna fucking yell at these people, and if they get pissed off enough, they'll come up front, you know? They'll say, what did he say to me? He called me a what? I don't think so. I'm going to go, you know, mm. And uh, by Jove, usually it ends up with a, a rocking good time. Sometimes there's smashed bottles and fights, but that's exciting. No one wants to watch a bunch of old people, old ladies knitting at a concert. You want to see some, you know, some blood and sweat. And we provide the tears. Hey, look, it's not never loud enough. This is for all the this is for this is for hot bitches in the audience. Thanks a lot. Uh, 
fingers in the bathtub. I wear the cock out, so pull it out. And put it in between your cheek and gum. Just a pinch. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, it's the night where you're supposed to love people. It's some fucking candy. Beautiful women, and especially the beautiful young little girls. Is that so I call out playing for some zombies? Yeah, I'm playing for some zombies. Hey, wait a minute. I'm playing for some zombies right now! All right. Take the gloves off, Johnny. Maybe if you, maybe if you guys were on Yong, you'd be a little more active. If you don't know what Yong is, it's a new drug, fresh in from Thailand. It's go, like go, crack. Go, go, it's like crack. Up. It's like crack, but it's got an eight-hour rush. You guys would be dancing. You dance your knees down to the boat knee. Dance your legs down to the. I can't even fucking do the. <laughs> blank, blank faces. Hey, this is called Confessions of a Yong Addict. Uh, hey, this is for beautiful, beautiful women and small children under the age of six. That was a cover, and so was this one. That was a cover, and so was this one. I don't want to hear any fucking bullshit from you people. I know you're like, I will not at a sports bar. I didn't come to see a cover band. Oh shit, fuckface. We've got a. Uh, we've got three and a half more. One for each horn on the goat. One for his little beard, and then one. For the one eye he has, the other was gouged out when he tried to suck on a unicorn. Shut your fucking mouth! This is kind of new. It's about how much my life sucks. Hopefully you can relate. One, two, one, two, three, go! The purpose of rocking is just to rock. It's, it's a purpose in itself. It's, a high, it's kind of a, you know, not to sound cheesy or cliched, but it's a lifestyle. It's a way of life. It's kind of a religion, if you will. Um, you know, you don't start rocking with a goal in mind. Like, I'm going to rock until I can buy a big house in Palm Beach, you know, although that would be nice because I like the beach with the people. You, you just start rocking and it takes over. And the only, you know, the only reason you keep rocking is because you can't not rock. Once you feel it inside of you, and once you're up there rocking for the people, and they come in in their little sweaters and their bike messenger bags and their little haircuts. and their, you know, pants, and their shoes, and their old socks. And they're in there, smoking their cigarettes, clove cigarettes, some of them. You, uh, you get up there, and you start rocking for those people. And you look up there, and at first they're like, oh, this is it's a little harsh. I can't handle it. I'm used to more kind of mellow, kind of introspective, sensitive kind of things, you know? I'm used to uh, sleepy time music. I brought my sleeping bag. I wanted to come to the concert, take a little nap. And then they see you and they're like, well, there goes my nap, you know, fuck that. I'm going to leave. But right as they start to leave, they turn around, they're like, oh, wait a minute. They feel something tugging at them. Like they're a fish and they've been hooked and they're being pulled, like, like, you know, they're being pulled along the ground by their hair, like a caveman would do, a cave person. And uh, they turn around, they're like, wow, something's happening to me. I feel different. And pretty soon, the sweater's off. You've still got the bike messenger bag on, but hey, you know, it's early. It's just the first song. They look down, all of a sudden, their pants are gone. They're just wearing little underpants. And there's, they feel something kind of happening in that area, a tingling, kind of like a uh, tiger balm, if you will, Ben Gay being rubbed on the affected parts. They're like, wow, I haven't felt this in a long time since my mom took me to see Eric Clapton, or whoever it was, canned heat. <clears throat> And they're like, oh, I don't know if I can handle this. And they take their bike messenger bag off. And they look down. They're completely naked. But then all of a sudden, there's leather pants. Leather pants have manifested on them. 
and they look up at the stage, and we're playing the rock. We're making the rock happen. And pretty soon, the whole place is engulfed in rock. It's a, uh, it's a pretty spiritual thing, you know? John's a real special kind of guy. Special in uh, what meaning? I'm not sure. He's a he's a he's a fucking weirdo, but he's good to to rock with. He's pretty creative. He can write a song at the drop of a hat. Colin as well. Almost every week they they both have new songs to play. So you know that's what we need. We need new songs all the time. Um, Billy's a, a powder puff. I mean, he's uh, kind of concealed in a, in a, in a Mexican wrestler's uh, body. He's, uh, he's awesome. I love Bill, man. He's like a brother. He's from San Antonio, too. And we just got, like, no, haven't really known each other that long, but it doesn't matter because it's like we're soul brothers. Man. It's like we, uh, we rock together in another life. Johnny's the same way, man. Johnny's a poet. He's the, he's the poet laureate of um, trash rock, if you ask me. I'm envious. I wish I could write words like that guy. So I try to make up for it by you know, holding up the, the music end as best as I can. You know, He's good in his own special style. Turn that fucking camera off, man. I'm serious. All right, it's off. <laughs> Why are you trying to get in the women's room? Is that a women's room? No. Nah. It says women on it. Not anymore. Don't you have a place to be? Dude, that's so MTV, though. Don't you have to go home and watch a uh, fucking... Is it, is it emergency? I'm not a girl, but oh well, sorry. Leave me alone. I'm gonna fuck each other. No! This one's about going to the rodeo. songs that people can take home with them and say, they were really talking to me with that song, you know? The lyrics, the rhythm, the tune, they'll be humming it. They'll be thinking, you know, they were right when they told me that it was poetry set to music. They were right when they said it was like a painting for your ears. They were right when they said it's like a uh, Fabergé egg for the mind, you know? <clears throat> and hopefully, when we're old and gray, we can look back and uh, think that we gave something back to the people that helped us, you know? Because we want to make a contribution. Because I know I'll never have children, and I doubt if Bill will ever have kids, because both of us have that, you know, that thing. Colin will probably have a bunch of kids, because he likes to, you know, make it with the ladies, make sweet love. Um, so this will be 
for Bill and me at least, this will be our legacy. Our name will live on after us, you know, uh, longer than any kid. Kids die, you know. Rock lives forever. Thanks. This is a great way to spend my afternoon. <laughs>